Well, thank you all for coming. This has been quite a, an interesting day, hasn't it? Um, I am going to um, respond to the allegations that have been raised. Um, but first, and if you bear with me, I'm actually going to read uh, something which was sent to me by the city solicitor in response to the issues which have been raised. Vice Mayor Falls, on a minimum of two prior occasions, you have sought opinions from the law department regarding your personal and professional interests in property near the streetcar route. We have also provided a copy of an opinion from the Ohio Ethics Commission dated May 28, 2010, which addresses interests related to streetcar votes. We have advised that Ohio ethics laws and current opinions of the Ohio Ethics Commission do not preclude you from participating in deliberations and from voting on streetcar related matters. Ohio Revised Code Section 102-.03 prohibits a city council member from using her official authority or influence to provide a definite and particular pecuniary benefit which would impair her objectivity or independence of judgment in making official decisions. And that's advisory opinion number 93-001. A council member may participate or vote on general legislation which provides a uniform benefit to all citizens within the city or a large proportion thereof. And that's of advisory opinion number 88-004. It is my understanding that as a real estate agent, you provide services to facilitate arm's length transactions between private parties. Your personal compensation is between one and a half and two percent on sales. These transactions do not include seeking direct benefits from the city for your clients or yourself. As a real estate agent, you are not precluded per se in participating in city matters which may ultimately impact property values in the city or the region. The Ethics Commission has concluded that the streetcar is a public, and this is a quote, is a public infrastructure improvement that provides a general and uniform benefit to the residents, workers, and business owners in Cincinnati. Based upon that conclusion, the Ohio Ethics Commission opined that in the absence of a direct benefit, council members may vote on streetcar matters. The relatively small commission interest and the speculative nature of any benefit that a particular vote may have on regional property values uh, makes it unlikely that there is any direct benefit. So that's one thing. The second thing is an actual opinion that um, was issued on May 12, 2010 from the city solicitor also. And this was in regards to my ownership of a condominium unit at 400 Pike Street. And on May 12, 2010, the memo says, this memo is written in response to your inquiry regarding whether the proximity of your personal residence to the proposed streetcar lines creates a conflict of interest related to your participation in Cincinnati City Council's discussions, deliberations, or votes regarding the general appropriation of funds. This opinion is subjective based on the facts available to the law department. But basically, it goes through it and reviews the facts and does the citations from the Ethics Commission and concludes the location of your private residence in the general proximity of the proposed Cincinnati streetcar line does not appear to provide you with a definite and direct pecuniary benefit or detriment in relationship to the streetcar project. We also have from June 18th, 2010. Now it's unfortunate that Mr. Cranley and his campaign don't seem to be able to do any research that goes back beyond 2013, but these opinions uh, were issued in 2010. This memorandum is a, is written to advise you of the Ohio Ethics Commission advisory opinion released May 28, 2010 regarding the ability of council members to participate in matters involving the streetcar project. In its opinion, the commission held that ethics laws prohibit a council member from participating in matters involving the streetcar if 
the council member has an ownership or development interest in property that is directly adjacent to the streetcar route. And then, of course, we have the actual uh, Ohio Ethics Opinion of May 28, 2010, which actually goes through it all. You know, and look, if you actually review and look through these opinions, the only thing that you can conclude in terms of the accusations that are being made by Mr. Cranley and his campaign, as well as some of his supporters, is that they are desperate. They know how close this race is. You know, Mr. Cranley himself is obviously engaging in the politics of personal attack and personal destruction <coughs> and is um, you know, relying and is desperate as we go into the last 14 days. An article published last night on WCPO.com raised these outlandish claims by Cranley supporters, some of them uh, the same radical supporters who have been uh, been raising issues uh, before. Uh, unfortunately, when my campaign was contacted uh, by the journalist who wrote the article, um, there was no specific questions asked regarding the ethics issue. Um, and so I think that what we need to do is recognize that we have 14 days before November 5th and the voters of Cincinnati decide who the next mayor of the city of Cincinnati is. And in the meantime, I will continue to do my campaign reaching out to voters, talking about continuing the progress that we are seeing throughout the great neighborhoods of Cincinnati, making investments in our communities, making sure that we actually have a strong economy that can provide jobs, that we have an inclusive community which provides opportunities for all people, and that we make sure that we solve the city's budget problems as well as pension problems over the next four years. And so thank you for being here. I think that it is very clear that uh, the ethics opinions were sought, the ethics opinions are clear, and Mr. Cranley is basically engaging in the politics of desperation. Thank you. Your opponent is calling on you today to directly seek from the Elections Commission an opinion about all this. You feel that you have done that already? We have by, opinions. By, by going directly to John Kerr? We have opinions from the city solicitor, and we also have a memo from the city solicitor, which includes an Ohio Ethics Commission opinion, which was asked specifically for all members of council regarding the issue of conflict of interest. And we have had that opinion since 2010. Is that the is that the one regarding Chris Boards? Is that the, the same one? That well, that was written in response to the issue that issues that were raised around Mr. Boards's situation. So that was. Are you saying that was an all-encompassing opinion that yes. would have covered all nine people at yes. that point in time? Yes. Okay. And in fact, if you actually read the communication, I just have to. There's a little paper. Oh, of June 18th, 2010, from John Kirk to the mayor and members of council it was to advise everybody regarding what the opinion was as it impacted all council members. It wasn't just generic to Mr. Boards. You had mentioned a, a, a one and a half, I think, the two and a half percent commission. Can you say today how many, how much money you received as a result of, of the property sales that have gone on in uh, the Long Street car route? I would have to add that up. Okay. I mean, but I can guarantee you that the uh, amounts quoted in the paper were not accurate. Is it safe to say tens of thousands or less than that? I would have to add that up. Okay. <coughs> what do you think? Um, um, Cranley today said that it may not be illegal, but he said it, it's the appearance of impropriety that he doesn't question. It. What's your response to that? Statement? My response to that is that as a realtor, I represent buyers and sellers. And I've represented buyers and sellers in Mason in Westchester and Pleasant Ridge and Kennedy Heights. And when I take on clients, um, they basically make the choices as to where they want to live, not me. And so I, there is no conflict here. And I think Mr. Cranley is trying to basically engage in desperate politics as we enter these last 14 days. Could, could it be argued in any way, given John Kurtz's opinion of uh, June 18, 2010, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that clearly you don't have ownership, but that you would have as somebody who is selling property. No, if you read the, the ethics. No, if you read the ethics opinions, it's very clear. No, 
That, that is really trying to create something that doesn't exist. Why not you individually go? Well, I think because very clearly we have an opinion from the Ethics Commission, and it is very specific. And then in order to reinforce it, also asking for an opinion regarding uh, my, you know, from the solicitor himself. And so we can provide copies of all of the opinions, and you can look at them yourself. Desperate politics in desperate times. On another matter, he indicated that he found it offensive and insulting the suggestion that he was paying for African American support. Would you address that as well? Because that is another matter that has sort of surfaced. Um, it would be hard for me to address since that's something that is obviously of concern for Mr. Cranley, then he needs to address it himself. I think he said it came from your people with your campaign as well. I believe that if you actually look at his finance reports, it very clearly shows who he pays and who he doesn't pay. Do you, do you believe he is trying to buy black support in this town? Or? I think that that's all speculative, and I've not engaged my, ever in speculation on that subject. So thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. Everybody has a copy? Great. Well, thank you all for being here. Appreciate it. There's one copy, right? Yeah, there's just one copy. But it has all of the, yeah, it has all of them in there.